Hello everyone, and welcome to Learn Xiangqi. The final of the 2023 World Xiangqi Championship has concluded. In today's video, we will analyze the first game of the final. It's an incredibly thrilling game, and watching it live feels like being on a roller coaster ride. That's why we have chosen this game. Let's dive right in. The 2023 World Xiangqi Championship was held in Houston, USA from November 19th to 25th. More than 100 players joined this competition, aiming to earn honors for their respective countries. In the men's final, we have the Grandmaster Slayer, National Grandmaster Meng Chen, and Lai Li Hyung, Vietnam's top Xiangqi player. Both players are renowned for their attacking prowess and it's their first appearance in the World Xiangqi Championship Final. Will emerge victorious? Let's discover together. Lai Li Hyung pay as the red player in this game and opt for the central cannon opening. Black developed the horse, and red did the same. Black then moved the chariot, and red also developed his chariot. Black developed another horse, slash establishing the classic central cannon versus screen horse defense opening. Red chooses the seven soldier variation. Black also pushed the soldier to activate the horse. Red advanced the chariot to Black's soldier rank. Typically, Black would respond with the edge cannon chariot exchange offer variation. But in this instance, Black opt for the aggressive riverbank horse variation, revealing Meng Chen's assertive playing style. Red developed another horse. Black developed this chariot. If you want to know more about the principles behind the riverbank horse variation, you can check out the link on the top right corner. Considering the vulnerability in the black central defense, the typical move for Red here is to advance the central soldier, initiating a direct attack. In the riverbank horse variation, the primary strategy for Black is to counterattack the Red chariot by advancing the soldier. Red moves his chariot to target the Black horse. Black advances the soldier, posing a threat to the Red horse. Instead of directly capturing the horse, Red continues to advance the central soldier. Black captures the horse, prompting Red to first capture the central soldier to deliver a check. Black advanced the advisor, and now Red captures the horse. And Black moves the chariot to the rift file. This creates a balanced yet highly intricate position between both sides. Here, if Black chooses to move up the elephant to strengthen the defense, Red can proceed by advancing the soldier to threaten the horse. After Black captures the soldier, Red can then advance the horse to compel an exchange with the Black Riverbank horse. This would deprive Black of the opportunity to initiate the counter-attack, which doesn't align with the essence of the Riverbank horse variation. However, Red did then opt for the most common approach in this situation. Instead, Red moved the chariot here to target the horse. This move compels the Black Riverbank horse to vacate its advantageous position, but it also releases the pin on the Black cannon. Black captured the soldier. With the Black horse having moved away, Red advanced his horse to the riverbank mounting a dual attack on Black's central soldier. Black pushed the soldier across the river, setting pressure on Red's elbow file, intending to trade the Red Cannon and subsequently attack the Red Horse with the soldier. Red moved the cannon away, avoiding the exchange, and simultaneously preventing the Black Chariot from reaching the rift file to attack the horse. Black moved the chariot upward, to establish a connection between them, gearing up to exchange the chariot with Red. Red moved up the elephant, fortified the defense on the right side. As planned, Black proposed an exchange of chariots. Red agreed to the trade. Then Black recaptured. 
Red then positioned this cannon on the elbow file. This move served a dual purpose. It threatened to push the soldier across the river in the next move and prepared for the development of the chariot. To address this issue, Black initially advanced the chariot to Red's riverbank, forcing Red to capture the soldier with the horse. Subsequently, the Black cannon retreated one step. Red developed the chariot, and Black repositioned his cannon to his left side. The intention for Black is to apply pressure on Red's right side, utilizing these pieces. Red advanced the advisor to reinforce the defense. Black shifted the front cannon to target the Black elbow file. Red moved the chariot to Black's riverbank. The Black soldier moved away, intending to attack the Red horse in this manner. Red also advanced his soldier across the river. Black advanced his soldier. Red moved the soldier aside, posing a threat to the black horse with the red cannon. Black then advanced his soldier once more. In the previous ones, both sides have been launching attacks on their respective left sides, targeting both the red and black horses. Rather than immediately initiating an exchange, Red took a step forward with his cannon attempting to displace the more valuable black horse. Black utilized his cannon to support the black horse. If black agrees to the exchange, red could capture the horse, posing a threat to capture the elephant with a check while the red cannon continues to threaten the horse. To counter both threats, black move up the elephant. Red could then simply exchange with the black horse and subsequently advance the soldier. Upon examining this position, Red possesses a combination of a chariot, a horse, and cannon, whereas Black only has a combination of a chariot and two cannons. The combination of Red's major pieces holds an advantage, as the presence of the horse offers numerous attacking possibilities for Red. This is why Black hesitated to immediately agree to the trade. Red captured the horse with the cannon, and in response, Black captured the horse with the soldier. The double cannons on the file posed a serious threat to Red's elbow file. To counter, Red utilized his chariot to attack the Black cannon. Black moved the advisor upward to target the chariot. Red advanced the cannon to propose the trade. However, Black declined the trade and moved the advisor downward again. Consequently, the red cannon retreated, and both sides repeated the same moves several times. All of Black's moves made in last three rounds have targeted the red chariot. Per the rules, repetitively pursuing the opponent's chariot for three consecutive rounds is not permitted. Therefore, Black must change their move accordingly. At this juncture, Monk made a daring move by sacrificing his horse for the elephant, aiming to generate attacking momentum through sheer force. This aggressive approach seems to align with Monk's preferred playing style, which he was unwilling to compromise. Red captured the horse with the elephant. Black traded the cannon with Red and subsequently advanced the soldier. You might be wondering, did Black manage to create some attacking momentum after the sacrifice? Well, not really. In fact, the Black sacrifice seems a bit reckless. It appears more like a blunder than a strategic sacrifice. With only the Black cannon, soldier, and chariot remaining, Black can't pose much of a threat to Red. Hence, sacrificing the horse was unnecessary. As a result, Red now holds a significant advantage. Red shifted his cannon one step to the elbow file. Black positioned his soldier near the palace, posing a threat of smothered cannon checkmate. Red moved his general out. Black delivered a check with the cannon. Red blocked it with the advisor. Black captured it. With the absence of the advisor, Black chariot and soldier can now pose a more significant threat to Red. Red withdrew the horse here 
setting up a Fed's office watering can and check me. Like established a connection with the elephant. Brad then pulled back the chariot, closed the trade. This tactic is typically favorable when we are fed by a major piece, because if our opponents agrees to the trade, the potential threats they pose diminish significantly, while we still retain enough pieces to launch potent attacks. Hence, when having an advantage with a major piece, considering trades with the opponents becomes a strategic choice, and vice versa. Black evaded the trade by retracting the chariot one step. Red positioned the chariot to this side, utilizing the horse to protect the soldier. The black cannon moved to this position. Red advanced the cannon to black's soldier rank, preparing to capture this soldier and initiate a fresh wave of attack on black's unguarded left side. Black moved the soldier away, intending to capture the advisor with the chariot. Black opted not to capture the advisor with the soldier, recognizing that a soldier at the bottom rank wouldn't pose a significant threat to the general. It moved up to the second floor. Red advanced the advisor. Black repositioned the soldier back inside the palace, targeting the advisor. Red employed the general to shield the advisor. Black then pushed the edge soldier to prevent it being captured by the red cannon. Red pushed the soldier forward, aiming to set up a central cannon position, prompting Black to advance the soldier. Note that Black is unable to move the chariot to the elbow file to attempt a skewer attack, as Red would capture the soldier, gaining a temple with an iron bolt checkmate. Consequently, Black must move the general to resolve this threat. The Red can execute a fog to eliminate the Black soldier. Red moved the soldier here. Given that the path of the black chariot was obstructed by the black soldier, black sacrificed the soldier, cleared the path. Red captured the black elephant with the soldier, and black recaptured it with the elephant. Red then set up a central cannon, creating a threat to compel an exchange with the black chariot like this. Black moved the general out, and Red captured the central soldier. Black moved the chariot here to attack the Red horse. Red gave a check, and then moved the horse to this position. The Red horse could then move here to attack the Black cannon, as Black could then pin the horse with the chariot. If Red were to shield the horse with the chariot, then Black could target the chariot with the cannon, resulting in Red losing a piece. Black delivered a check with the chariot. Red broke it with the advisor. Subsequently, the Black chariot moved to the elbow file. At this point, Red cannot capture the Black soldier, as Black could then seize the opportunity to capture the Red chariot with his skewer. Therefore, Red opted to move the general downward. Black positioned the chariot here to target the red advisor, anticipating that red might move the general upward, potentially leading to a draw fire free runs of repetition. However, red foresaw a potential victory and opted to sacrifice the advisor, capturing the threatening soldier instead. Red had already secured a winning position. Black captured the elephant with the cannon, aiming to exchange it for Red's powerful central cannon. Red captured it. Black gives the check by capturing the advisor. Red blocked the check with the chariot, and Black captured the red cannon while also targeting the red horse and central soldier. In response, Red advanced his horse. In this situation, Despite Red having lost all of their defending pieces, they still possess an additional horse and soldier. If Red managed to trade the chariot with Black and capture all the Black soldiers, it would guarantee a win for Red. Black pulled back the chariot to Red's soldier rank, aiming to attack the horse and set the stage to eliminate all of Red's soldiers. 
Red continued advancing the horse, targeting the elephant and the chariot. Black captured an elf soldier, gaining a temple and threatening a smothered checkmate. Red moved the chariot up to evade the checkmate threat. Meanwhile, Black repositioned the elephant. Red further advanced the horse here, setting up for a potential elbow horse checkmate. Black shifted the chariot to guard the rift file. Red delivered check, while Black obstructed using the chariot. Red then employed the chariot to shield the horse. With the Black chariot immobilized, Black advanced the soldier across the river. Simultaneously, Red also pushed the central soldier. Black directed the soldier toward the center, while Red moved the soldier to the rift file. Black subsequently moved the advisor downward. Red progressed the chariot to the soldier rank. Black nudged the edge soldier one step ahead, aiming to thwart the red chariot from capturing it easily in subsequent moves, while also impeding the red soldier from advancing. Red initiated a check, prompting Black to move up the advisor. And in response, Red withdrew the horse to the soldier rank. Black employed the chariot to obstruct the red horse. Red gained the temple by targeting the black soldier, prompting the soldier to advance one step. Red then maneuvered the chariot to gain another temple, followed by the red chariot moving here to propose a trade. As previously stated, Red's strategy involves trading chariots, allowing the capture of the black soldier with the horse, leading to a favorable endgame. Typically, as black, one would steer clear of such trades. Surprisingly, however, Black chose to accept the trade. The rationale behind this decision lies in the aftermath of the trade. Following the exchange, the red edge soldier faces obstruction from the black soldier. Black can move another soldier, getting closer to this soldier, eventually capturing it. Meanwhile, the red horse is distant from the black edge soldier. By the time the red horse reaches the location, the black soldier will be beside the red soldier, forcing an exchange. With only a horse and a soldier against black's elephant, two advisors and a soldier, red faces an impossible task to secure victory. Following black's acceptance of the exchange, red recognized the impossibility of capturing the black soldier before it reached proximity to the red edge soldier. Despite being up a piece, Red understood the necessity of persistence and waiting for his opponent's errors. Black moved his soldier aside. The Red Horse retreat. Black moves his soldier once more, leading Red to position the horse here to assail the soldier. Red chose to temporarily immobilize the Black Soldier, thus moving the general back inside as a waiting move. In response, Black also adjusted the general's position. Red propelled the soldier forward, while Black advanced the general. Red moved the soldier to the elbow file. Black then shifted the general downward. Red continued advancing the soldier, and Black readjusted the elephant to the side. Red progressed the soldier further, and Black repositioned the elephant to the bottom rank. Right. Red strategically positioned the horse to assail the soldier, prompting Black to maneuver the soldier closer to the red soldier. Subsequently, the red horse advanced to here, setting a cunning trap for Black. If Black overlooked this threat and moved the soldier again, Red could utilize the soldier to give a check. With the Black general compelled to retreat inward, the red horse could then move to the edge laying the groundwork for an elbow horse checkmate. Given the circumstances, Black has no fireball defense, and Red was poised to secure victory in the game. However, Black anticipated the trap and promptly maneuvered the general back inside the palace. In response, Red strategically positioned the soldier within Black's palace, securing the escape route of the Black general. Black directs the soldier closer to the red soldier. 
Red tactically retreated the force to the middle, laying the groundwork for a checkmate. Black elevated the advisor, leveraging the general to pin the red horse, prompting red to adjust the general's position while maintaining the checkmate preparation. Black then moved this advisor. Red moved the horse to target the black soldier. Black positioned the advisor strategically, ensuring an escape route for the black general if attacked by the horse. Red captured the soldier, and Black did the same. The game persisted for an additional 30 runs until both players reached a draw. However, these runs primarily comprised rating moves, so we won't delve into them in this video. I would like to touch upon three key points. First, let's discuss the sacrifice made by Black. As previously mentioned, the sacrifice proved unnecessary and didn't benefit Black's gameplay. It highlights the importance of calculating and justifying sacrifices before making them. Otherwise, it could lead to a challenging situation, as we have seen in Monk's gameplay in this instance. The second point worth noting is Black's incredible comeback, transitioning from a losing position to an even one. While Red might have made some errors under the intense pressure, it's essential to acknowledge how Black maneuvered his way back into the game. Beyond skill, a resilient mindset plays a pivotal role in shaping us as better Xiangqi players. Lastly, let's discuss the winning prospects for Red. Black can only prevent the check. Red actually retains the chance to secure victory in the end. To initiate a check, Black can't block with the chariot as it may lead to a potential apple horse checkmate for Red. Therefore, following that, Red can propose a chariot exchange. What's the difference with making a check? After they exchange the chariot, Black moved the soldier who was the red ash soldier, and the red horse retreated here. If Black keeps on moving the soldier, the red could give a check with the Palcona horse, and then captured the black elephant. Black moves his soldier, red retreated his horse. As you can see now, red is going to capture the black soldier in the next move while Black will need two moves to get his soldier around the Red Edge soldier. Red can get his soldier across the river, making it a winning endgame. If Black recognized that Red could initiate a check with the horse and reacted by advancing the advisor here, Red could respond by moving the horse here to guard this position. In such a scenario, Black will be limited to making a waiting move allowing Red to further advance their horse. Subsequently, Red will position the horse here, set to capture the Black Edge Soldier in the following move, which again will lead to a winning endgame for Red. Now you can see why giving a track before offering the trade does help Red to win the game. The subtle shift in positioning or tactics can entirely change the trajectory of the game, showcasing the intricate and captivating nature of this game. If you find this video helpful, please like this video, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. You could play the game online on xiangqi.com by clicking the link in the video and screen. If you want to play over the board games, you could click the Amazon link in the description to purchase the Chinese chess set offered by xiangqi.com. You could also join our Discord community by clicking the invitation link in the description. Stay tuned. I will see you soon.